Well, winter is hit up on the mountain. We got a day of snow. Unfortunately, it melted after about 24 hours, but it was kind of nice to see the snow anyway. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. Some of you may get that, but I'm talking about trees in this, and the story is about two fruitless mulberry trees. The first one here, I climbed up inside and started to thin it out and open it up and get rid of some of this congestion, but I want you to look closely at how many times this tree has been butchered. Some people call it pollarding, but it's really butchered. And it's a, amazingly, it's a species of tree that will tolerate some really hard pruning or hard cutting, how, whatever you want to call it. But this uh, rental unit has two of them. It has this one very large one out in the front yard. And you can see where it has been topped off multiple areas, down low, up a little bit higher, then up a little bit higher still. And every year this tree just kind of grows and grows and grows. And it's turned into quite a monster. And then the tree in the backyard, it's not quite as big, but I'm sure a lot of you recognize that culprit right there. Give me a second here. That is the infamous Armillaria malaya, also known as oak root fungus. It's a saprophytic mushroom that I've talked about many times in many of my videos. And you only see the mushroom fruiting body on wood that is being decomposed by this fungus. So we got a problem. We got a serious problem. And uh, let's see, I went back out in the front yard and I decided, at first I got up in the tree and I was gonna just clean it out and pull stuff through, but it was impossible. So I decided to reduce it all the way around before I started thinning it. Yeah, here we are in the backyard. Actually, the front yard tree was a little bit too wet. It rained the night before, so the backyard tree seemed to be a little bit better to start on. And here you're looking at the finished result. We thinned it out and opened it up. And this is after we blew, blew everything off. I did leave it fairly presentable. And you see lots and lots of stubs all the way around. Unfortunately, with this kind of tree, you don't really have the same kind of options that you do on other trees where you can cut it back to um, a continuation or a branch. But that oak root fungus there, that, that's really got me perplexed because inside I'm thinking, you know, this tree's going to go. And then there's the replacement tree for when it does go, a one-sided live oak. That thing is kind of a nuisance. And this is interesting. This is what it looks like when we're done. Um, this is a finished picture of the same tree. There we go, back to the original picture of what it looked like when we got there. And you'll see how we cut it back all the way around. Now, maybe not arboriculturally correct, but sometimes you don't have options. And that's an overlay of the two trees, and you can see where we cut it back. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, some trees you just can't deal with the same as others. Okay, okay, I'll feed you guys. Oh, Hank, come on in. Settle down. Holly, Holly, sit, sit. Back, back, back. Sit. No, sit. Hank, you wait. Back, 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 back. Sit. Holly, sit. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Give me a paw. No, 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 back up. Give me a paw. Okay, good. Give me the other, ah, give me the other paw. Sit, sit, sit. Give me the other paw. No, give me the other paw. Good girl. All right, go ahead. All right, let's see if we can get the big dog to do the trick. Uh, that's a big dog. Uh, down, down, down. Wait, wait, back, back. Wait, 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 wait. All right, Hank, give me your paw. Oh, geez, that was sharp. Give, no, I didn't say it yet. Wait, give me the other paw. Nope, other paw. Whoa, okay. All right, one last one. All right, speak. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> ah, dogs, I tell you. Love them. Don't know what to do with them sometimes. All right, this story of two trees is an interesting story because 
A lot of you are going to look at this video and say, ah, man, that's not the way to trim the trees. Uh, why'd you do it like that? Da, 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 da. And in all honesty, um, we had a serious discussion about this. My son, Kalen, and I got there and I instructed him as to what we agreed upon, meaning the client and myself, in terms of what we were going to do. And his first reaction is, why don't we just cut this back hard again? This thing is a disaster. Look at this mess. And he went on and on. And he was actually upset that we were pruning the tree the way that I made the recommendation. And I did. At the end of the day, it was me that said, why don't we do it this way? Because. And it's that because that's so important. Now, if you look back in some of these little video shots, you'll see that the location of this rental property, let me back up, it's a duplex. There's two properties, two trees, a tree for each personal or each tenant. And the location is a very, very busy spot in the concrete jungle. There's very few trees around here. You know, there's some street trees down the road, but where this is located, um, it's, it's right by an, uh, a very, very busy street, Hamilton Avenue. And you can see all the traffic in the background and, and it's, it's kind of, well, it's, it's not the most pleasant place to live. So when I spoke to the owner of the property, I suggested, I said, why don't we just keep these trees fairly large? I'll cut it back because it was all over the roof. It was hanging down too low. And it's a maintenance problem. She has to trim these trees every single year. So the long and the short of it, the reasoning for not cutting these trees back really hard again was to keep the integrity of the green space for the tenants. And having these great big shade trees in the backyard and the front yard not only shaded the house, but gave them uh, a sense of privacy that was uh, better than just being right out in the open. Now, in fairness, I did not see those Armillaria malaya mushrooms, the, the oak root fungus, when I bid the job. They popped up after it rained. And in fairness, had I seen those, I might have suggested to the client, well, you've got a problem here. So here's where I'm kind of perplexed. I get there and I've got the job to prune the tree. We're there. So I decided to prune the tree. I suppose I could have called her up and said, we got to get rid of it. But that would have put a stop to the whole job. And she may not want to get rid of it this year. It may last a few more years. There's a whole lot of what ifs on this job. So I had to make the decision. I said, let's go ahead and prune it. We'll do the best we can for what we've got to deal with. I will inform the client as to the likelihood of this tree declining, more than likely it'll die. They don't rarely, they don't often fall over. Now there is root rot there, so it is a possibility. But it's a big, wide, bushy tree, so even if it does fall over, it'll just kind of nestle down in the area. It's not like a big tree that's gonna crash through the house. So it's it's sort of the yin and the yang. Which way do we go? What's the, what's the choice I'm gonna make? Getting back to the, the pruning style, um, this is a tree, both of these trees, you can see clearly have been butchered so many times that we're not doing proper pruning as much as we are containment and maintenance of the monster. Uh, had these trees never been butchered, had never been topped, the type of pruning that I would have suggested would have been entirely different. I would have trimmed them a total different way. I would have kept them large, but I would have made lots of selective cuts and I would have um, allowed the tree to be a fairly large cut, get it off the roof, get it back. But in this case, because there's so many weaknesses and so many um, areas of decay that I, I've got to get rid of some of the leverage. And and it's really interesting. You know, I talked to the tenants and, and they loved having the trees there, but the neighbor you know, I had to go talk to the neighbor because I had to work in his yard. And his comment was, why don't you cut that damn thing down? So his perspective of the tree has nothing to do with green space. It has to do with the mess. It's a deciduous tree. Every year it drops a gazillion leaves. And that's all he can see. That's all he can think about. So I'm dealing with the balance of ideas and the balance of reasoning. And I brought it all up to the owner of the property, and this was the final suggestion. I know these trees aren't gonna last forever, but let's prolong it as long as we can. It is what it is, and this is the decision that I had to make. Thanks again for watching.